So how to get points of interest from our sigma? Well, it wouldn't be a long talk, right? You just open the data in AJS or download your fabric, choose the area, choose the formats, download it, uh, and filter by your points of interest. And that's basically all. That's how you get points of interest from all the sigma. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what the point of the score? <laughs> So, the uh, thing is, uh, I have been in opposite for way too long to know that's not the end of the story. Uh, for like 13 years, I've been entering points of interest, like two days ago, and I've been getting them to do all the stuff, the coding, routing, whatever. And every day I'm encountering some new little carrots, some little things that one should know when using opposite map data because it's not that simple. Like, uh, technically, yes. Now it is really, really simple. It's, the project has been there for 18 years, of course. You can download opposite map file and process it from the command line. You can open a website, filter points there, and download a geojson. You can do it even from QGIS, the plugins like QGISM that just do it, make it all possible from inside tools you use. It's really simple. Like, first you, you just need to filter points you need, for example, supermarket send, and you go. How do you know what to filter? And that's like the, the first obstacle in my panel. Uh, to start, I have to like explain a bit about our consumer data model. Uh, Regita yesterday did an amazing talk about our consumer. She didn't get into any details, which I will show you now. Uh, again, not to be opposite reference points, ways, well, plants, and close ways, which are called polygons. Must let's not like, make one of these. Uh, these are just geometry. Uh, they don't need anything until you put tags in there. Tags are key value pairs uh, that bring meaning to geometry. Uh, these key values are just strings, they can be anything. Uh, you can write it in whatever language you want. Uh, it will be still valid for plastic map. But usually people prefer to like, stick to tag people use often. Like set natural and tree. The point, and it makes a point of view. Set uh, an entity pharmacy on the point, and it makes a point of uh, pharmacy. But of course, there's no motivation. It's entirely possible to set whatever. You can have point street, you can have a point of traffic sign. Uh, just won't render, if it's possible. The other thing is, you actually won't have to do this. Just good to know. That there is no relation. Now, uh, how to filter for points of interest in OpenStreetMap? You have to know the tags for things you need. For example, supermarket, visit numbers, shop, and supermarket. On the filter out, all supermarkets in the city. Uh, and then you can do like, geoanalytics or whatever. Uh, thing is, uh, unlike proprietary datasets, which come with instruction and a list of like two, four hundred types it supports, uh, opposite map doesn't have a set specification. It just mappers make it a big old. Like uh, if they encounter something there is no tag for, they invent a new one. Sometimes it's not very consistent. For example, uh, pharmacies are an amenity while pet shops are on shop uh, key. But, uh, well, you can find all that in the uh, opposite of region. It's uh, pretty simple, you have to search. Uh, it got like thousands of different texts you might be interested in, uh, so uh, But the real world, sadly, is very complex, unlike our maps. And 
sometimes it's the lines are blurred. Like what's the difference between small shop and big shop? Like convenience store and supermarket. Uh, every member has their own ideas. Some think it's the size or freestanding building, or that in supermarkets you have to use trolleys. Nobody knows. It's just a hunch. So you have to know the like some fuzzy lines between similar types. Like how do you discern a pub from a bar from a restaurant? McDonald's calls themselves a restaurant, even though everybody knows it's a fast food chain. Okay. Sometimes there are duplicates uh, in uh, classification, like uh, for notary offices, there are two equal tags. If you are looking for notaries, you have to filter by both of them. It's just something you have to know. It's mostly everything is documented on the wiki, so when working is first interest, what's the wiki is your friend. But that's not all. Like this is uh, real. So when you query, for example, schools, when I query uh, schools in Thailand, I got eight points and 90 polygons. So the thing about OpenStreetMap takes more on any, anything and often they go on polygons, not just points. And if you have been working with proprietary data sets, you know it's just all points really you know. Polygons are a bit harder to work with. Like how hard can it be right? It just takes in the points and work, work it with uh, common point windows. Uh, no, oh, the tags are the same. Like these schools, if you use uh, binoculars, you can see that uh, the tags are mostly the same. So, like, both are schools, they have uh, some numbers and stuff. Uh, but the polygon means a territory of a school, which can include multiple buildings and parking and stuff like that. So, if you use the data for anything practical, like routing, how do you route to near a school, you have to, like, learn what a school territory is, like uh, find the main building, find the entrance and the gate, or something like that, so you know where to bring people. So it's not simple, but it's closer to truth, because in real world there are no points. Everything projected onto a two-dimensional plane is a polygon. Even street signs and trees are actually polygons. So it's closer, but it's harder to use. Like if you mapped all the roads as polygons, it would be impossible to build roads. Right? Uh, so with point of interest, you just have to know that. For example, uh, center of a polygon, like geometric or center of mass, not always lies inside the polygon. So that kind of thing you have to keep in mind. Of course, all the modern giants have things to do with that, uh, but again. And again, real world. Uh, sometimes uh, points of interest have multiple types. Uh, the most common example are fuel stations, which often have not just fuel fueling things, but also a shop, a coffee, a cafe, a car wash, stuff like that. These are all uh, like one thing, they are often managed by the same two people as by the counter. Uh, how do you map that? In a state map, there is only one type for the other. These, these things are simple. Like, uh, these are spread geographically. So you can have different points for car wash, or foil, or uh, convenience store. It's, it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Like, most common example are these. Little shops where you can cut your keys, uh, duplicate keys, and uh, repair shoes and stuff like that. They are managed by a single person. They have like single open hours, uh, and they are not spread geographically. So you have to map it at a single point. But in almost it map, there are not just you can have just one type of point of interest. What do you do? As for me, I usually choose one. 
for example, I wanted to kick up and make a mark on the description that you can also repair shoes or whatever. But when you're using points of interest from OpenStreetMap, you have to know that you have to know that it's common that these little shops do everything. So you have also when you're looking for shoe repair, you also have to filter by key cutter because well, it happens. There are different solutions to that, of course. Uh, like uh, you can technically you can specify, specify multiple values for a uh, key, like on the last one. It's mostly not supported by virtually anything, but it's a possibility. Like I didn't invent this value, I took it from tagging one, which is like the statistics for all the keys in the signal. So this happens. Like there are more than a hundred uh, keys for key cards and shoemakers in the world. One is even in Riga, like 10 kilometers from here. Just not all the others. Uh, but again, it's key value. You can have the same values, you cannot have the same keys. But some point of interest, like types that occupy different keys, and there's a, this urge to just put them together. Like, really common thing building plus supermarkets, like free standing supermarkets. You will find it all the way. Or school territories, they usually have fences. So, fence plus school, school, really common. They are different device, but you have to know that that happens. Uh, and, uh, well, there's this limitation on types and attributes. What like separates OpenStreetMap from proprietary things is that in common data formats you work with, like shape files, geo packages, CSVs, these are tables with predefined set of columns. In OpenStreetMap, you can put whatever. And that means that for attributes of points of interest, you got like an open buffet that you you can find anything. A lot of standard stuff, like names in different languages, like operators, websites, uh, like Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Uh, and open house. Open house and open feedback is like more com like more complete than in any other alternatives. You can easily map like last Monday of the month or Specific days like 24th of December. It's all over the signal. Really hard to parse, but it is there. And you can find attributes you don't see anywhere else. Like, I'm pretty sure Opposite Map is the only mobile source for wheelchair accessibility for points of interest. There are hundreds of thousands, if not more, we didn't check actually. Uh, points of interest leveled with whether uh, can or not be accessed by a person in wheelchair. But again, this being a real world, there are some blurred lines between values. Like, uh, what is the difference between limited and non? We can never know. It's like, it can be anything on the ground. So. Uh, and the thing is, these attributes are usually mapped by people who don't use wheelchairs. So we have a very vague idea where one can and cannot go, so it is limited. But most of these are like, you can use like, wheelchair tag, just know that the real world is more complex than anything you can imagine. Uh, yeah. How to find? These attributes, because this will surprise you, you can just study opposite of wiki and search on overpass turbo for some samples of QI you want to use. And you might see that it has some really useful attributes. The last type of attribute for point of interest is address. Like uh, it's pretty common for points of interest uh, for address inside, inside of cities, at least. Like uh, house number, street name, how could it be? Like every point of interest has an address inside the city, right? Well, they do, but not on street map. On street map, like every 
one in four when the printers have addresses on them. And for others, you have to implement them from surroundings. And again, how far from the field? You've got address, addresses in OpenStreetMap, you just find the closest one, and that's the one, right? Except OpenStreetMap has polygons. I don't think any other data set has polygons, and that complicates anything because address points can be inside building polygons, and they apply to build it. There can be multiple address points in building. There can be freestanding address points, or address can be on a building and have address points inside. So, this is like the entire thing. It's easier for cities and for like uh, countries to just find the enclosing polygon. Still, so determining an address for points of interest is a hard task in itself. You will have to need a reverse geocoder, and you cannot use an API because these are points of interest. There are hundreds of thousands of them that you will want to process. Like you don't have all night and all the money in the world to query some API. You have to set it up yourself. Uh, regarding reverse geocoder. I have made a talk like three years ago at Poznan. You might want to look it up. It's like basically the same I'm telling you, but about addresses. Really fun stuff. Uh, right. And taking it apart an address that you can find in normal sigma, but virtually nowhere else, is floor and room. Like, uh, I think one in five. Points of interest in OpenStreetMap has, uh, or one in ten, I don't know, has floor mentioned, uh, mostly for shopping malls and stuff, and that's really amazing, right? It's more than I expected. So you can navigate yourself in most of them. Now, there are so many habits when using points of interest, and you might think, like, I don't want to trouble myself with all of this. I just pay some really big money and get a database point printer from I don't know, TomTom or here or whatever. And I'm pretty sure that would be better, right? Because the coverage uh, on my last job, one of my tasks was to assess proprietary QI datasets in comparison with all the stigma. I had like multiple, three, I think, from mm -hmm. major QI providers. And like when I look at coverage, so number of points of interest, mm -hmm. it's not even a competition. Like proprietary data sets uh, have shown to have like 20 times more QI than almost human. Like, it's pretty obvious because in OpenStreetMap, uh, how do get how do people get QI in OpenStreetMap? Uh, just like I did two days ago, you go out on the street, you see uh, what you can see, and you put it on the map. So hundreds of thousands of people all around the world walk around their cities, look for points of interest, and put them into OpenStreetMap. Hundreds of thousands are not enough. Like, there are so many people like making these points of interest in real world, like setting up shops, setting up companies. We don't have enough methods, even with hundreds of thousands. Proprietary companies don't have the number of methods, they use other methods. Um, so, when so they import the data, they use some yellow pages stuff. And with that, they get better coverage. But again, better. Because they get more points of interest. For example, uh, this is uh, an area in Tallinn on Google. You can see it got lots of points of interest. But since I live there, I know that everything is alive. Like, there are two points of interest, really, where everything else is just taken from some business register. You see this OU, it's like some company registered in residential building. Like, people use Google Maps 
There is no cosmetic store. There is no clothing store. That uh, cut out a movie room that doesn't sell anything actually. It, there is nothing here. But with regards to coverage, Google seems like it's much better than normal treatment if you just don't go there. So more is not always better. And yeah, as I said, members just go there and they look at like uh, type names, shop plates, and they map the core like thing in almost state map is truth on the ground. Like any member can come there and verify that what is on the map uh, confirms what is all on the ground. And that means you get less points of interest, but the quality of it is perfect because almost every point of interest is validated by a member. So geographically, they position perfectly, they have all the real attributes, they're not taken from the register, but, but hence verified by members. So there is no competition on that. But with coverage, uh, yeah. Uh, really quickly, what do I do about that? I use I create a character editor that I use to get POIs, and it's like more effective than anything on the market. Like uh, it just shows POI standard editor, and it's like I generate like one point of interest a minute, and it allows me to cover uh, big areas. And also, it has a uh, like confirmation button. Like now, we know the freshness of points of interest. There are 10 check dates in open statement that marks when this point of interest has been checked. This is very effective. I just, uh, a month ago, I went to that area in Thailand and I surveyed half a thousand Point of interest, well, updated information and updated missing ones. Uh, on a kick scooter, it took me two and a half hours. Really effective, and well, with that, I think that will be a future of almost treatment. We'll slowly start catching up on uh, coverage as well, and that's when the proprietary data set will be. So, to summarize, expect polygons. Not the seat map. It's really unusual for data sets, but they give you so much more control and frustration. Uh, classification is weird, uh, but OpenStack Wiki is a friend. Don't forget about reverse coding. And it gets better. Like this, every year with OpenStreetMap, you know more things and you uh, process more efficiently. And this time, OpenStreetMap itself will get better. Thank you very much. Um, so I'd like to call your attention to a couple of comments that have come in, so very briefly. Uh, first of all, there's an invitation. Uh, if you'd like to map the surrounding area, please meet outside of this room at 1030 and join a group of mappers who will use the 1030 to 11 o'clock slot to map this building. Thank you for that initiative. Um, secondly, uh, perhaps you would like to comment, Ilya, on the comment uh, that was made by Matush, specifically uh, regarding uh, opening hours. Opening hours are terribly complex parts, but there are some parts of libraries doing this written already. Would you like to briefly comment on that? Yeah. Everything in almost treatment, including open hours, is terribly hard to parse. Uh, they're just uh, natural things. But, there are also a lot of developers in OpenStreetMap, so there are libraries. The uh, Java, JavaScript, Python libraries to parse open hours. One of these I used in original I think. Uh, that just helps with things. You know, just feed it a line from OpenStreetMap, it tells you when it's open, when it's closed. Uh, just use open source. Like opposite map is very, very powerful open source. All the QGIS, PostGIS, Starbucks, and to scale, uh, thousands of different libraries, it is there to help you use OpenStreetMap. 
Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, give Ilya another hand and thank you for applause.